I never went to uni. I don't feel bad about it. I'm never going to go to uni. And she's a successful business owner yeah, I'm, right I'm, now. I'm happy driving her own car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, there's this thing when you come out of uni, it's called like dep- uni, like depression. There's something that because you have all the skills, you're qualified enough, but no one wants to hire you. Yeah. So you feel like you've done everything that society has asked you to do, but there's nothing to show for it. There's yeah. no reward. Yes. You go to work, they want experience. But with that experience, they also want qualification. But without the qualification, you don't have the experience. So it's like, what end of the straw am I deciding to pick? There's been loads of news articles. Oh, Gen Z don't like to work. Gen Z think they can do what they want. You think that you can talk to us anyhow. You can work us anyhow. Make us do things that are outside of our contracts. Do you pay me for that, baby? It's not about, I don't like working hard. Because I do work hard. It's the respect. It's the respect. Like... I understand that you're the manager, but it's still a level of respect that needs to be had between the both of us. You're not going to ask me to do something outside of my job description. Do you ever think about an exit plan? Do you ever think of what's next for me? I feel like people think too much about that. Like, uh, you're trying to structure your life so much. Our parents were born in Africa. There was always a set structure. You have to do this and this. You think so much about it and you're just unhappy living in that structure. Like... Do what makes you happy. You're thinking too much. And it's yeah. also harder because they have kids, bills, all of yeah, these we things. Don't we that. don't have that. So we have the freedom to think of other things to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you respond to people who say, um, this is like radical feminism, you're too hard-headed, you won't go anywhere, you will die lonely. Eh? <laughs> That's insecure men talking. Yeah. Yeah. So That's I think... There's like a crisis of masculinity going on because women are in higher paying jobs. There are women in STEM. Men are scared. What do I do now? What do I do now? A woman can make as much money as me. I, don't, I feel like a lot of men struggle to come to terms with that because they were able to deliver the bare minimum before and get away with it. Now women have standards. They have independence. They have freedom. They have rights. It is scratching their masculinity and they don't <laughs> like it. They don't want to be challenged by women. They feel like women should know their place. There's no place. As young women, do you ever feel like there was a gap, you know? Because you have your mom around. Do you ever feel like there was a gap not having your dad around? I feel like you'll be lying if you say you didn't. Because as a child, when he left, Mm -hmm. I didn't understand. And the worst part, me and my friend were talking about, it was like, your mom always ends up looking like the bad person. My dad actually ruined my life. Like... I feel like that whole thing, it, it kind of ruined my relationship with like males and how I relate to them and everything. For me, men are so replaceable. It's not a thing. If my dad left, you can leave. And that's how I've always seen it. But yeah. Sinead, you still have a beautiful connection with your dad. Why do you maintain it? I mostly maintain it because I don't take anything personally. Like, I'm very forgiving. But now I realise it similar to Larissa, it affects my friends could do something to me so many times but i'll just be easily forgiven because i just don't want them to get a very good morning to you and a warm welcome to lns my name is lynn googi now if you are sitting there and you are a gen z i can tell you today's conversation is about you for the longest time they are the generation that feels so misunderstood we look at them and we are like who are these people what are they even up to i even like are they aliens do we even get them but honestly they do not even care about your opinion my friend lilo sent me a message and she was like lynn i need to you to find that lady from Uasin Gishu that checked uh, the governor, the senator, and she had no chills. And they, she was like, we came here early and you guys were just late, right? And I've been wondering, where do they get the confidence? Uh, like, Will they even be having impactful conversation or are they just people who love lazing around, having a soft life and just not caring about your opinion? And what are the chances that today here in London, I would get to have a conversation with three beautiful girls who also happen to be daughters of my incredible friend and sister, Lydia Tet Olet, so that they can walk us through this phase, you know. I do not get them, but I also do not judge them because I don't know 
what it feels to be in their shoes. So we are about to hear from them. But before that, allow me to say thank you so much to our partners at Tap Tap Cent for coming through this episode. Remember, guys, you can always send money back home to your M-Pesa or bank account using Tap Tap. And by using my code LIN, you are able to get 10% cash back on the amount on your screen right now. I want to say thank you so much for being incredible supporters of our work. If you're watching this and you've not subscribed, you know what to do, guys. Just hit the subscription button, share our work so that we can continue having meaningful conversations. And now without further ado, please allow me to let these beautiful girls with amazing hair, makeup, dresses, I'm looking at them, I'm like, am I even underdressed, guys? <laughs> Introduce themselves. Hello. Hello. Hi, Preeti. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I'm good. Yes, you want to tell them your name? Yes, yes my name is what Denise. You do. Mm -hmm. Okay, my name is Denise Manyasi. Yeah. Uh, I am a. Oof, a lot of during the day, I'm a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, call me Barbie yeah. because I do so many jobs. Yeah. But my main job is dancing, African dancing, African workshops tie-dye storytelling performing that's my main job yeah yes. should i ask how old you are should you no do you feel like telling us it's a rude it's a rude <laughs> it's, a rude. <laughs> no, it's, it's rude. rude to ask a lady her age yeah mm. yeah but you are in your mid-20s mm, so yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i know yeah thank you so much <laughs> larissa how are you hi how are you <laughs> i already told them your name <laughs> Hi, my name is Larissa. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you do, Larissa? Um, I'm a baker, so I'm an entrepreneur. I've, I stay at home and I bake cakes, all type of cakes, wedding cakes, birthday cakes, graduation cakes. Subara! Everything. Subara! That's me. Yes. What's that's the that's name? Me. Yes. Sweet Tooth. Yeah. Dot XO on Instagram. Get yeah. it right? Yes. That's her business. Yeah. First, I, I, I look at you and I'm like, oh God, you are too young. You know, but you bake the best cakes ever. So congratulations on that skill. Thank you. You know, you're welcome. You. Yes. Hi, baby girl. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You're well? Sorry, I ate all your chewing gums. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. I'm Too bad. Kidney, don't worry. Yes. You want to introduce yourself? My name is Sinead yeah. and I'm in my second year of sixth form. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uni next year and I study English, psychology and sociology. Wow. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> why, why psychology? I like what, like to know what's going on in the human brain. Yes. Even in uni, I want to do forensic psychology. So I'm going to interview criminals and find out what about their brain psychology, their brain makeup made them commit the crimes that they did. Yeah. You love it? You enjoy it? That's why I love criminal minds. You love criminal minds. Well, I what I love about you guys is the support you have for each other. You know, one day an incident happened and someone was trying to intimidate you and how all of you came. She, she was sleeping. She was a yes. <laughs> She was sleeping. But how you guys come through for each other, it's like you're ready for it. Is that it? You have yeah. to be. Mm. Why? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's your family, man. You yeah. can't not love. If you don't love your family, you're sick. Only sick people don't love their family. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Like, why would you hate on somebody that's in your family? Mm -hmm. Too bad. Too bad. If that's the case, too bad. Too bad. Like, you gotta have a too bad. Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you have, like, your sisters. Why would you hate your sisters, man? Like, yeah, sister. I don't understand. But I don't know, get so, it. You know, not everyone has this. Not everyone has this connection with their siblings. Yeah. 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 But I don't get it. Mm. <laughs> Do you get it? I don't, I don't get, get it. it. I don't get it. <laughs> Even you don't get it. Don't get it. Mm. You don't like, get it. Mm -mm. You are Kenyan. Or yeah. uh, how do you identify? Kenyan. Kenyan. Proud. 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 Kenya Taifa Letsuku. Kenya Tunaya Ipenda Daima. How often do you go to Kenya? Um, we've been, is it three times? Mm -hmm. She's been one, one more, more time yeah. than us. Yes. Because she actually wanted to 
settle down there. Yeah. You want to settle in Kenya? Yeah. Why not here? What's here? This is not my country. <laughs> this is not my country. But you were born here. I was born here, but if someone was to ask me where I'm from, I would never say England. I am a Kenyan, a proud Kenyan. What do you know about Kenya? That you got independence. <laughs> On what the twelfth of December, nineteen sixty-three, is Jamhuri Day. Yes. Yeah. What else do you? Know? <laughs> you know who we know? Like... You know who we know? Ryan Odinga. Yeah. Yeah. You know Lua. Yeah. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Do you know Ryan Odinga? Yeah. So what do you know about him? <laughs> <laughs> Kenya, not even just Kenya, Africa in itself is a jewel. Yeah. It's the place that people, I'm not saying no names, <laughs> but people want to keep you away from because they know the treasure that's there. The potential. That is have. there. Yeah. But I'm not a fool. Nah. <laughs> I'll yeah, be going mean. back. <laughs> And I see, and I know, yes. and I want to bring my friends, and I want to bring people because Kenya, Africa is beautiful. That's our motherland. That's where we're from. Yeah. You'll okay. never understand yourself to the fullest unless you go back to where you're from True. and learn your history. Even though history is ugly, history makes you who you are. Yeah. So that's why we go to Kenya. We love Kenya. We want to see Kenya. We. Kenya is Kenya, man. Kenya, Kenya is Kenya, man. Yeah. So you are the first born. Yeah. She is the second born. Yeah. And Sinead is the third born. Yeah. Right? You were born of a Kenyan mother and a Kenyan dad. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. What do you think people who are watching you from England are feeling right now? Because you're in their country. They appreciate when you acknowledge where you're from. Mm. You know, when you act lost. Uh, yeah, I'm British, I'm British. They say, I'll send you back to your country, mate. I'll send yeah. you back to your country, mate. But if you tell them, oh, I'm Kenyan. Oh, but your accent's so good. Yeah, no, I was born here, but I'm from I'm, Kenya. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's when you try to claim their territory, they act like they have authority over mm -hmm. you, but that's yes. not the case. Yeah. I was just born here, but the blood... Is Kenyan. Is Kenyan. Daima. Yeah. Daima! <laughs> Shine, how do you feel about that? To be honest, they, people shouldn't be feeling any type of way. Yeah. Because when they were traveling, we didn't say anything. We said, let you travel. When I go back to Kenya, you're, you're in my place. You're in my space. When I'm in your space, you want to eat me. Calm down, man. Calm down. Yeah, calm Maybe down. Calm down. <laughs> calm hey! Down. <laughs> Maybe calm down. That's how you feel. Yeah, I feel like just because I am Kenyan, it doesn't mean you have to feel a type of way when I'm in this country like people go and explore other places so they can make like expand their contacts yes. network make a better life for themselves that's what my mom came to do when she moved to this country we're gonna go back don't worry yeah. we, don't, we don't like it it's, this country is not all that that's what they need to know yes that's what they need to know you, you're gonna go back yeah i feel to like they feel entitled they feel like this country is number one yeah what's the summer that we're experiencing <laughs> this is the first day of sun we've had yes the summer is awful though. Terrible. Oh God. I think I was conned. Someone lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> I came with my booty shorts. Oh no. Yeah, no, the wrong one. Yes. 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 And mom was like, it's usually like so hot. People have So hot. Yeah. Mom told you that. Yeah, she did. She was oh, no. dead wrong for that. She she tricked you. <laughs> she tricked you. <laughs> she tricked me. Yeah. yeah but like, talk to me about uh growing up here. How was life like growing up? Uh good. Yeah. There, there's no well it's different. As a child, maybe in Kenya you'll see struggles growing up, but here, you know, we didn't really see any struggles. I think growing up in this country, like you're oblivious to certain things that actually happens. Like whereas if you like look back at it at this age, you're actually like that shouldn't have been said or that shouldn't have been done. Because there's times like in primary school, like you might really like a teacher and you go home and tell like I'd go home and tell my mom something like, oh this teacher said this or this teacher said that. And she'd go in the next day like a like a thunderstorm. And for me it was like, I like that teacher, like don't do that. But if you look back at it, it's actually like 
it's like this like like microaggressions mm-hmm. so but at that age you wouldn't see anything but now looking back at it i understand why it was an issue and why like your parent would react in the way that they do because yeah. they know the hidden connotations behind the things that are being said or the way that they're behaving yeah have yeah. you ever experienced things and you look back and you're like that wasn't okay oh yeah. all the time yeah black, black boys are not allowed into school with afro combs because mm. they say that uh, it's a weapon um if there are too many black people congregated in one area they say you guys are intimidating and you need to separate even, in even when we're just having a good time yeah like if this in is in shops, schools and in, in shops, shops after yeah. school you're not allowed more than two, two school, school children, children in inside the shop and it's just like but if it's a different race it we're not getting that. treated the same way yeah. so but when you're young it doesn't seem that bad to you it's just like it oh it these is. are things that are, that are just happening to me and i just have to deal with it it's mm-hmm. not that bad yes. but it's only as you get older and you look back and you're like wow i really shouldn't have let that run yeah. i shouldn't have taken that or accepted that i should have checked someone <sighs> yeah. but nah i also think it's yeah it's probably better that we didn't yeah she need have I experienced anything? Yeah, like, even still in my school, like, you feel like it's more prominent when you're younger, but as you grow older and get more information, teachers feel like they can challenge you. Like, I'm one to change my hairstyle a lot. I change my hairstyle, teachers like, oh, you knew here. Like, you've seen me before. Like, <laughs> you've actually seen me before. What are you doing? Don't do it. <laughs> like, it's just weird, because you're just thinking, like, you're like you're being weird, don't yes. you think? Especially t- coming to... Touch the hair. hair. Yeah. Like, I really oh, wow, like your, your hair, hair is so. <sighs> Teachers who love to be microaggressive towards particular demographics love to work in schools that are really diverse and it's like if you don't like the children there don't put yourself in the environment because the teachers don't deserve all of this shade you're throwing because they're actually here to learn mm. and once they challenge your authority they're in trouble they the have no chance. Say that you're intimidating me what me I've been a teacher before. If you're intimidating me, you need to leave. <laughs> you don't need to be working in a school where students are intimidating you. Yeah. How does that make sense? A student is intimidating you. Yeah. Me, that I'm not so far off the students, I'll be telling them, listen, you don't want to try that here. You mm. better do what you need to do type yeah. thing. You that you're 30, 40, 50, you're saying that a 14-year-old is intimidating you because of their skin colour. Yeah. You don't need to be in school then. I think you're underqualified if that's the case. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. When you start telling them that, oh, hey. you're being passive aggressive towards me and it's a big thing in the They're staff room. They're calling for backup. There's like four teachers by the time the situation is being handled. handled. Like, there's just too much it's going too much. on. But if oh. you were to bring one more friend while you're speaking to a teacher, they'll be like, oh my gosh, you're being aggressive. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's not nice to use, like, in my school, a teacher called me aggressive. And I was like, it's not nice to use that word against black women. She was like, oh, no, you can't be calling me racist. I said, I don't call you racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to take responsibility for your feelings because I didn't call you racist. You called yourself racist. Yeah. I've got nothing to do with that. Okay. She's like, it's a word used against all women. I said, have you ever been called aggressive before? She said, no. I said, so which women? <laughs> which yeah. Women? Yeah. You've been a teacher before. Yeah. I told you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> You've been everything. You've been everything. Yeah. You've been everything. Yeah. How was it? Like, how was the experience for you? Like, and why did you just decide, I won't do this? It was terrible. It was the worst thing. <laughs> it was the worst thing because I worked in Greenwich. So Greenwich is predominantly uh, black and Asian. Yes. Um, so I'm in a school, I'm in the staff room, but I'm young enough to connect with the kids. Yeah. So that's what teachers don't like. They don't like when other teachers come in at and they're all. young enough to connect yeah, with the students. Yes. They hate that. And that was me. I'm not here to be friends with the teachers. I'm here to give students the best education as possible. Mm-hmm. And then I was working with um, students that have bad behavior. So that was even worse. It's like, they're liking you. Why do they like you? But how can you help someone who doesn't like you? It doesn't make sense. Mm. So it was just like, oh yeah, we don't want you working with this student because of even though the first time I was working with that student, they've made significant progress. They don't want that. They want to put the child in the seclusion room. They want to get the child excluded. There was one child that, oh my, I cared about this boy so much. The school got him sent back to his country instead of dealing with the situation in school. They didn't want to deal with it. They keep excluding back children, p- 
putting them in seclusion rooms. They don't want to help them, but they want to be in that demographic to be able to get funding from the government. Mm. And it's so bad. And when they realized, four of us started by January, we started in September, right? By January, all four of us were gone. Because we were like, we cannot be in this school. You do not care about the progression of the children. You only care about the look and the funding and Ofsted report. Mm. But the worst part is because it's a Catholic school. I was even on the bus one day once I left the school and they were like, one of these African aunties, no, it's a Catholic school. My son has to go there. It's so good. And I was like, auntie, you don't even know. (laughs) The Catholic school is just a name. The school is so bad. But... There's nothing me as one person can do. Yes. So that's why we have the business mm. that we've set up to try in the summer holidays, Easter holidays. You have bank a business? Holidays. Yeah. yeah. To try get kids involved. So we try to make it free. We want sponsorship from the government. Yes. So that because rich kids can always pay. We're not looking for rich kids. We're looking for the poor kids whose parents can't give two pounds to six kids to come to an after school Mm. club or to come to a summer school club so we want it free so they can come in have something to do because they've shut all the youth clubs down shut all the clubs down so there's nothing for children to do in the summer Mm. holidays now they're going to oxford circus looting stores last year's summer there was a (laughs) video going around on tiktok all these black kids went to central london and they were just stealing and breaking stores. stores Because they have nothing to do. Yeah, from a criminal mind perspective. Because what they're doing <laughs> is crime, though, is what do you think the source is? What do you think needs to be done? I feel like they're just doing it as an outburst. They're doing it as a reaction to all the labels they're given. You're giving me the label, so I'm going to act as how the label's telling me to act. Yes. If you don't give people negative labels, they're not going to act in a negative way. Like, you're telling me I'm something, so I'm going to act as that something. Which is bad for people to do obviously but people need to realize as you're giving people labels that's how they get a low self-esteem and act out Mm. they're not doing it for attention they're doing it because they don't know anything else they don't know how to act in a positive way because you haven't given them a chance to yeah as soon as they've come in you're a bad boy you're a bad boy obviously i'm going to act bad you haven't you haven't said anything else to me so so there we go and talking about labels you guys have been labeled as not only gen z but really hard to figure out why do you think the prob- the world has a problem with you guys i think because you guys have followed such a routine <laughs> she said like a slave to the patriarchy like you guys <laughs> uh, you are you guys are slaves to the patriarchy they're doing how it's meant to be like you go to school, you finish school, you go to uni, you get a job, you, you find a married. person, you get married, you have children. Uh, like, yeah. I don't want to do that. I get never. Me out that rat race. Yeah, like, I don't want to be a part of that. That, get like, that rat race. constant cycle. Like, I never went to uni. I don't feel bad about it. I'm never going to go to uni. And she's a successful business <gasps> yeah, owner I'm, right I'm, now. I'm happy driving her own car. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, there's this thing when you come out of uni, it's called like dep- uni, like depression. There's something that. Because you have all the skills, you're qualified enough, but no one wants to hire you. Yeah. So you feel like you've done everything that society has asked you to do, but there's nothing to show for it. There's yeah. no reward. Yes. You go to work, they want experience. But without experience, they also want qualification. But without the qualification, you don't have the experience. So it's like, what end of the straw am I deciding to pick? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And we're all very three different people. She's very academic, going down the academic route, like, good for her. One thing I love about my mom is we were never forced to be something. Because, you know, there's there's this, like, African tradition. You have to go to uni, you have to study and be a lawyer. None of that. We were allowed to explore and delve into our own passions, which has allowed us to create money in a way that makes us happy. Me? I can't stay in a job that don't make me happy. I'm no. gone. <laughs> I'm gone. That's I why I leave the same day. day. Like, it's the shit. I'm I'm like, like, I say, I'm oh, can work. I go on my break? Gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. Like, I've done that so many times. I'll be at work, like, if I'm at a job, and they're just working me like a dog. Like, do I look like a dog? <laughs> like, if I don't like the job, Go. I'll just go. I'm like, can I go on a break? Can I can I make a phone call? I'm going oh. home. I don't care. I'm and, going home. And then I'll be seeing like 
Mm -mm. aunties and uncles that are like obviously retired but you know they want to do something with their time and they're talking to these people like crap like they'll be saying yeah you go do this you go do and I feel like Mm -hmm. ah, it hurts my heart because why are you talking to auntie like that why are you talking to uncle like that it's because you think you can do that yes there's been loads of news articles are gen z don't like to work gen z think they can do what they want no it's gen z don't take from no one that's the truth you think that you can talk to us anyhow you can work us anyhow make us do things that are outside of our contracts do you pay me for that baby i ain't got no key i ain't gonna go this hard no <laughs> seriously i do not have to do that and i will not do that yeah and another beauty is we're able to make money off things Different that we things, love yeah. our passion social there's media you, yeah there's youtube tiktok nails, nails lashes, lashes. Like, eyelashes there's so many things in demand right now. You don't actually have to... I will make to... this money offline. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you are not going to work me like a like a dog in the factory. And that's what they're shocked because that's what the older generation does. Yes. You know, you have kids, you have bills, you have... I ain't got none of that. And in saying that, about working like a dog, it's not like we don't like hard work because someone that has their own business, I work hard. I work hard. nights, I work days. I can go two days without sleeping. So it's not about I don't like working hard. Because I do work hard. It's the respect. It's the respect. Like, I understand that you're the manager, but it's still a level of respect that needs to be had between the both of us. You've hired me as a waitress. This is a real life example. But you're asking me to sweep the floor. There's nothing wrong with sweeping the the floor. But that's not my job description. If it's something that I'm meant to do, I know why I'm there. So if you ask me to do something I'm meant to do, 100% I'm going to do it. You're not going to ask me to do something outside of my job description and even the way you're asking me like you can ask me to do something that i'm not necessarily supposed to do but just because of how you've come across i can understand it's something that needs to be done and i will do it yeah. but you need to clean it if you don't clean it you'll be fat i will go home before you, you can even fire me i'll quit. quit i'm going home i'm going to make a cake what do you mean i'm going home what's the queen yet guys nah. do, you, do you ever think of an exit plan where she, are you going she's worked one shift she worked one shift one Don't shift. That question. i got a headache and i never went <laughs> <laughs> what's your exit plan for? Where, where are you quitting to go what do, do you ever think about an exit plan do you ever think of what's next for me i feel like I, people think too much about that like uh, you're trying to structure your life so much especially because we're like first generation that are born in like america england our parents were born in africa there was always a set structure you have to do this and this you think so much about it and you're just unhappy living in that structure like do what makes you happy you're thinking too much just oh. think what do I like to do? Do it. Not think, oh, what would my mum want me to do? What can make me the most money? You're unhappy. You're not happy. And it's yeah. also harder because they have kids, bills, all of yeah, these we things. Don't we that. don't have that. So we have the freedom to think of other things to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And another thing is saving. We, not you, <laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> we have savings. And I think that's down to we didn't just rush, go get married, and now you have to. I got a job. You don't hey, do I that. Know that is a mistake. Apart if from he's my not a millionaire, choice. that is a mistake. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. You don't do that. Yeah. I, I, me, you too. <laughs> that's wrong. Personally, I don't agree with that. No, that's wrong. No, personally, what, I don't agree with that. What do you like, subscribe every, to? Everybody, like, in this, in this, Generation is like, I need a rich guy. I'm not part of that WhatsApp group. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 it is. Okay, it you is. don't have to be rich. No, no, you no, 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 Listen, what are you doing with a poor man? It's not necessary that he's a poor man. Uh, I don't even want but to be with a trying man. No, uh-uh. I would. I would. That's <laughs> with a trying man. That's <laughs> different. Like, <everybody laughs> I'm not <knows>. trying. <laughs> Sorry. That's a different. Like, everybody is like, he has to be this, has to be that, has to be that. I Me mean, personally, yes. I'm willing to like, I'm willing to be with a trying person. Mm. You're willing to, to help him and build him up? Yeah. Yes. A baby. No, but that's what for me. That's what a relationship is. You guys are supposed to build together. But they want to like it's like a footballer. 
even a drug dealer of course i can't do that, that. Was, yeah, to that me good. to me no it's not that but to me if you're poor dating is irresponsible it is <laughs> that being a man. How can you be dating and you're poor? You don't have most people for our days. You're saying 50 50 at the bill. Pay yourself. It's disrespectful. It's rude. No, 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 no. I'm not saying poor. Of course, how can I go out and ask me to pay 50? That's rude. And you're not no. going to see me again. That is, that is dead wrong. I can pay for a date. No. I treat I treat my boyfriend. I would treat. But my boyfriend it. is not poor. No, he doesn't have to be poor. But initially, like, he has to pay for everything. I would, I would take a guy out. Not yeah. the first time. I would take him out. I would buy him presents. I would do all those things. Yeah. These guys like he can't be trying like he can't just work like a normal job. Like I'm not saying you, but that's like the whole like. What's the you word? You can work at a normal job, like. But are you? But are that's you not really. To that do if more? You, that's if, not poor. But if you go, if you go on like social media in like today's age, it's not a nine to five. This guy has to be like in tech. He has to be in for a boot camp. Yeah, he has to be yeah a boot master. camp. I'm not like that. For me, like you can do a normal job. Yeah, yeah. but listen, as those ladies that do that have no money either. I don't, I don't like lazy ladies. What? Yeah, I say you can only be lazy when you're married. Until then, you have to work hard. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't be a lazy lady. They you have to sick. work hard even when you are married. <laughs> you do. She you do have to work hard. hard. She said, "What do you? Mean? Would you? What, what? What part are you dating? This one dates us. <laughs> she is a she's princess. A, she's a, she's, what's the word? She's a what's the? She's a what's those fish that eat you? I don't know, a like leech. A leech. Yeah, she's a leech. She laid. We you know are she laid back. The no, the, yes. I don't get anything less than princess treatment. I feel like there's Gen Z and it's easy. <laughs> My mum provided for me to her fullest. My yes. sister always for me like, why should a man give me less if my mum and sisters give me everything I need? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of that segment. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> your mum and dad have worked hard or your dad has worked hard by himself or your mum has worked hard by herself or your grandma, whoever the hell raised you. And then you're going to be a slave to a man or you're going to be a slave to a woman. It works both ways to me. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yes. Too bad. Impossible. Too bad. Yes. You gotta leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta leave. <laughs> so she, they, they, they get you whatever you want. Yeah. Hey. Uh, everything I put on my Christmas list is all there under the tree. They're Father Christmases. And I absolutely love it. You're, they're teaching me how to respect myself. They're, not, they're teaching me never to settle for less. Because why would you? There's no need for you to, unless you don't respect yourself. Yeah. But growing up in our household, my mom always taught us to love ourselves. Every day before we leave the school, we leave for school, she says what? An affirmation. <laughs> We're a beautiful black African princess. Mm -hmm. A leader more than of a men, a follower mm -hmm. of Christ, more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. That's what she makes us say to ourselves. And yes, I've internalized it. That's what I am. And after that, you want to go to a poor man. Why would I sell for a bum now? No, sir. Not here. Too bad. Too bad. Oh my God. Mom does that. Yeah, yeah. and I absolutely I love you. it. Mm -hmm. She actually taught me how to love myself more than any man could ever love me. So it's even like, I'm not even in this life to try and end up with a husband. I'm fine by myself because I have my own goals that I want to achieve for my family, for myself. Men aren't on the list right now. <gasps> That's good. You hear someone, oh, I finished uni, I'm looking for a uh, <laughs> Hold your tongue like this and slap it a back in your mouth. A man. A man. <laughs> Girl, like you can have a boyfriend, that's not my issue, but making that your own priority, goal, yeah. your priority, you it's know, so some yeah. the the mm -hmm. nationality that I know a lot is Nigerians. You know, like I have some friends my age, their mums are on them. You're embarrassing me. All my friends' kids are married. You're not married. Look at the shame you're bringing on me. Shame. What shame? It would, a, it would be a shame if I got married today and, and divorced, divorced next year. Like, like that's a shame. Not not getting married today. No. Do you know that's yeah, yeah that's something that I, I really really don't like about mm. like the older generation. Sometimes my mom's not like that like at yes. all. Yeah. 
to be fair, she's like the complete opposite and puts the boyfriend far, 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 I far. Bad man. Hmm. You, you, you talking about mom a lot. Talk to me about mom. She's, she's different in the sense that, as I said before, she never forced any of us to do the traditional path of once you finish school, you have to go to university, then you get married, then you have kids. That's something like she never forced. Yes. As you, you know, me and her never went to university. Well, I went to university for a year and I left. Why? Um, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't what I thought it was. What did you think it was going to be? Because I went to do performing arts. Yes. And I don't know if it was from Disney Channel that I was watching. And when I came to put it in real life, it was like, no, sir. It was not what I thought. It was too yeah. much practicals. And that's where I was usually my weakest. Because if you look at my results, it was always A star, A star, A star, um, practical. And then, theory. no theory, sorry. And yeah. then practical will be like mm -mm. C's, D's. Then it kind of leveled it out to not be that great. So I thought that I'd find more experience going outside and doing yes. my own thing. So I left. You left. She, she wasn't really into that. What did mom say when you said you're leaving uni? Um, as any person, she wasn't just guara guara for joy. <laughs> she was just, yeah, she was like, you know, she spoke to me and was like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Try to explore other options. And it came to the point where it was like, yeah, like, I really don't want to do this type thing. And she was like, yeah, that's fine. But don't just think you're just going to like leave uni, come home and like do nothing. You have to like plan your next steps for what you're going to do. And that has happened. And I've planned my next steps and I've done my thing and my thing is going really well. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, yeah, same as Larissa, she didn't even get to uni. She did not like it at all. Why? Um, I don't like this country. <laughs> like, I don't. When I finished um, secondary school, my original plan was to actually go back to Kenya. And that's when I was 16 years old. And I actually did go to Kenya, just me and my mom. That's why I've gone one more time than they have. Yes. I went to Kenya and I was trying to find a place where I would, like, settle. But I feel like, the time just wasn't right yeah. and mum is very she cares a lot she's very overprotective and mm -hmm. i'm someone i'm not scared of anything like i would do anything mm -hmm. and i feel like that's where mum intercedes on my behalf so she she brought that like you know you've never lived here before reality check yeah she was a reality check she was like you can't go there like at this moment mm -hmm. so i came back and i did six form and i was like I'm not doing uni. Like, I don't want to stay here, so I'm definitely not doing uni. Yeah. And I already had my business, so... Just I, yeah, I just went down that path. Yeah. And it went from now only, like, cakes to food. I haven't gone to the public with food, but food is also my passion. Because she wanted to so, go, yeah. not live with family either. She wanted to live in a hotel oh, no, no, no. in Kenya. No, 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 no. I was just going to go somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> she wanted to go to I'm a gonna hotel. I was going to go to the streets. Yeah. I don't know like, anywhere. Chef. <laughs> yes. Star, five star. Yeah. She wanted to live there to work in the kitchen. Yeah. So she wanted to like learn there. Someone was like, You're going to Kenya. You don't know anyone. You don't know anybody. You don't know the language. You don't know the language. You're going to stay in a hotel by yourself to work in a kitchen in a Michelin star hotel. I get it. But, but I don't. But it's not right now. You're not going. Yeah yeah. 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 To talk to me about mum. Yeah. So she, she's very, she, she will support your dream because she still did take me to Kenya. But at the same time, there's also that kind of realism to her. So she was like, I know this is what you do and I'll support you 100%. But now is just not the time because yeah. I was only 16. Yeah. So that is still a goal of mine and she is still pushing that. She's very, very supportive. Okay. She's yeah. optimistic. She's, she's supportive. She's... She's good. Everything. Oh, everything. you love her. Yes. Shanae, what tell me about mom. I feel like... One thing I love about her is that she's really reflective. Like, she reflected on her own childhood and she said, this is not what I want to give my children. And she gave us a brilliant one. Like, the relationship I have with my sisters is all thanks to her. She made a household where we're safe to feel, to talk about how we feel. One where we had such a strong bond with her and each other. And as they said, she isn't one to, like, stuff our fruits with how she feels about a certain thing that we don't like she'll sit us down and be like share your opinion on it like how do you feel about it mm. and we'll talk to her about it like school i've talked about changing what i want to study a few times with her and mm. she asked me like why do i want to change it all the time she tells me oh talk to me about it she's a really great listener she's a busy busy woman yes. especially in july yeah but oh. she'll always make time to listen to us 
call us sometimes just say i love you give Aww. me a hug Aww. even though sometimes i get up like oh we still give her that hug because we love her. So I'm downstairs. Yeah. I'm downstairs for <laughs> hard. When you were laying down eating food on the TV. You got to put upstairs for hard. Yes. And it's like, obviously, it's not always me saying it. Sometimes we knock heads about certain topics. Mm. Like, school was initially one for them. Piercings is a big one. Hair, like, we want to dye natural hair and she's she doesn't really want us to like ruin our hair with bleach and stuff even though yes. she's mrs redhead exactly <laughs> yes but it's like she will still listen to how we feel she won't just say no 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 no, no and not yeah. listen to anything else it's like yeah yeah i feel like she's she's so different from other parent teams yes. you see like sometimes you look at your friend and you're like oh like oh that's nice <laughs> <laughs> they're just like i'm so thankful this is my mom <laughs> yes nah do you think African parents get it wrong sometimes? They want to force things on you. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like that's the, that's the balance between her being born and raised in Africa, but also coming to the UK and having children in the UK. Mm. It's very important to teach your children the culture and everything. But at the same time, you need to realise you're in the UK and there is like the westernised side of things. Mm. So when raising up a child in this setting, you need to incorporate both. You can't be that lady that you wear in Kasumi. Like, you can't do that in England. Yes. But at the same time, we're not English. <laughs> so we need that Kenyan side mm. in our household mm. as well. Okay. Ah, how about dad? I'm the only one who still speaks to my dad. Um, yeah, when, when I was born, my first memory is just my mum and my sisters. Yes. I'm thankful I grew up with them. No shade to my dad, but... I love the all-girls household. It's yeah. nice and free, like, I can be myself. Yes! <laughs> but I still talk to him. I have no bad blood with him. I still love him very much. I go and see him sometimes. And sometimes he'll be like, see your mum's interview with Lynn. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all. He watches it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Hello, Okoyo Manyasi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like, He's even though they don't speak to him, he still wishes the best for them, wishes mm -hmm. yeah. the best for mum. Yes. <laughs> so you don't speak to dad? No. Why? I honestly really don't have anything to say. And um yeah, I just feel like it would be doing a disservice to try and say something here if it's a lie or yes, something. Yes. Yeah, I don't really know what you want me to say. No, so. you don't have to say anything. Yeah, I don't have anything to Larissa? say. Larissa? No, um, mm it's easier to the, for there not to be a relationship here as well as mm -hmm. people that live in diaspora mm -hmm. because ladies are such go-getters whereas in kenya i'm not from there so i may be wrong but yes. like you know the men are meant to be like the providers so it's like even if you there's so much bad blood between you and your dad you're going to stay in that situation it's not really like that here and the mom that i have it wasn't really like that so when things really got to where it needed to separate it did mm. separate so I wasn't gonna try and keep a relationship with a Yeah, a she birth. was always doing her own thing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you back to being with a poor man, your poor man, your poor lady, it doesn't make sense. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm Barbie, she was Barbie. Oh my mum was Barbie, she was doing DJ DJ That oh. was her tag thing. It was DJ, DJ Ted, Ted in yeah. the house. Yeah, mommy's a DJ. Yeah. yeah, like a professional DJ. Yeah, yeah. like she can do what? <laughs> yeah, yes. she so went to so school. Dad. You know those records and everything. She'll nah. be switching oh. them up like this. Come and say, and say, come and say. Yeah, all of that. Seriously, she's done. She's actually done so much. So. What, what what do you love about her? That? Yes. Like, it was always like, it might not even be that something didn't work, but she was always on to the next, the next thing. The, the next, next thing. Like She never let she, any of her troubles hold her down. Never. Yet. Like, yeah. She said, you don't like me? That's fine. Move on, on to, to the, the next. next. That didn't work? That's fine. On, on to, to the, the next. next. Yeah. That did work? Put that in the backpack. On to the next. Like, what? you can't dwell on all your failures because that gets you nowhere in life. There are always people who are talking, oh, this didn't work. Mum says, okay, I'm thankful that the last thing worked. On to the next. Maybe this failed for a reason. Mm. On to the next. Yeah.
but seriously though as young women do you ever feel like there was a gap you know because you have your mom around do you ever feel like there was a gap not having your dad around uh yeah you i feel like you'll be lying if you say you didn't because as a child when he left mm -hmm. i didn't understand do you know what i mean yeah. so i'll be lying if i said that yeah i've been fine every time i don't care da, 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 da. that's not the truth when i was little it was um yeah it was like oh like why is this happening that it was more distraught and disruptive to everything that was going on yes. but it's as i grew older that I started to realize dynamics and what was actually happening. Cause mm. at the time, all you hear is an argument or you see a fight, but you don't actually know what's happening. And yeah. you're five years, your mom's not gonna come to you and say, oh, your dad was doing this. Mm -hmm. And this is why this happened. It's just, you see the argument, you see the trauma, you take it in and you're like, oh. And the worst part, me and my friend were talking about, it was like, your mom always ends up looking like the bad person. Yeah. I don't know if that's because it's the person that stays in the house with you or that's the person that's more emotional and reactive in the argument. But when it was younger, it was always my mom that I was angry at. You're kicking dad out. You're doing this bad thing to dad. Da -da 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 -da. And she'd always just be like, okay, like, like if that's what you want to <laughs> say, I'm not going to explain. Like, if that's what you want to say, that's what you want to say. She never bad mouthed him, nothing like that. It was only when I got older and I realized that me and my friend were like, oh, like, I feel so bad for like the way we used to be like angry at our moms when we were little, not knowing what she had to take from whatever she was arguing with her husband or her partner. Now taking three little kids, <laughs> like BS that they're angry at her for whatever, holding it all in, still trying to keep the family together. And you're just this little kid like, Ma, why are you doing this to dad? Da, 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 da. So it was like, oh, that was kind of sad, mm. but you can't go back. You can't go <laughs> there's back. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, there's not Larissa, how, but how do you cope with all that? Because you saw it, you had it, mm -hmm. right? So how do you out it out? How do you cope? I'm someone that I really keep something in. I remember the other day I made a comment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I made a comment to Denise and I was like, my dad actually ruined my life. Like, I feel like that whole thing it, it kind of ruined my relationship with like males and how how like i relate to them and everything for me men are so replaceable like if you're not working if you don't want to work i'll switch you out it's not a thing if my dad left you can leave and that's how i've always seen it there's no one that's someone that's supposed to teach you love like from that from that mm -hmm. like from the male point of view he's supposed to love you show you how you meant to be loved by a man so it's like if you can leave me you can leave me and it's not really gonna phase me that's just how i see it yeah. so definitely like now trying to grow and i'm definitely trying to work on that so it's not like because i won't i will not fight for a relationship with a man i will not i will let you go so it's definitely something that i am working on so that I won't let things that have happened in the past because there's some things that I do remember and it's like are you serious <laughs> like are you seriously like if that's how you're going to behave like nothing can no one can tell me anything yes. so it's definitely something that I'm working on and I, fi I find that funny because when she said that statement I was completely blown away it's just I was like how can yeah. you say your dad ruined your life like he didn't ruin my life. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you can be in the same household, all experiencing the same thing, and but it affects you all differently. True. Like she thinks her dad ruined her I life. I definitely say that. I really don't think he done anything. I took it in a perception of yeah. my dad left, nearly 90% of my friend's dad left. Why should I take that as your life has been ruined? Mm. It happens to everybody. You just yeah. get over it and yeah. carry on with life. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's how I am. But she's talking about he ruined her life. When she said that, I was like, <laughs> You are you're lying. lying. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, God. For me, that's how I took it. Like you destroyed the way I put I I handle relationship with Mel. So that's just ruined a very important factor in my life. Yeah. Mm. So you did ruin it. You did ruin it. Yeah. But Sinead, you still have a beautiful connection with your dad. Why do you maintain it? I mostly maintain it because I don't take anything personally. Like if someone does something to me, I won't take it personally. Like. I'm very forgiven and yeah, he just doesn't, he hasn't done anything to me personally, but mm. one thing him leave first, I always used to think he left because of me. Cause when I was born, like soon after he left, 
But one day my mum was talking about it and she was like, it was not your fault. And I was like, oh, okay, well, whew, weight lifted off my shoulders. Yes. <laughs> but now I realise it, similar to Larissa, it affects some of my relationships with like my friends or like if someone wants to talk to me like men. Mm-hmm. It's like... Boys. 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 <laughs> boy. Boys. <laughs> my friends that... My friends could do something to me so many times, but I'll just be easily forgiven because I just don't want them to go. Yes. I don't want them to go. So I will forgive them as many times as I need because I want you to be there. I don't want you to leave. I realise that I'm like overly forgiven. Some of my friends are like, Shanae, do you have a backbone? I'm like, yeah, I do. Yes. I'm just going to forgive you because I don't take things personally. Something yeah. else must have made you act like that. It wasn't because you wanted to be rude to me. Mm. Well, And I'm um, the opposite. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. But do you view her differently though because she's maintained a relationship with the dad? No. Yeah. You have to do what you want to do for your own life. He's still your dad at the end of the day. And remember, she didn't see as much as I did. She barely saw anything. She just saw him leave. But I saw all of the other stuff and I know a lot of stuff. So it's a different relationship mm. that I have yes. than she would have. Than she would have. Yeah. Wow. Talk to me about dating. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> what about it? Dating. How is dating life like in the UK for you? It's in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It's 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 not good. So Why? It's trash everywhere. Hi. Yeah. What are you looking for? Especially boys here. Like I don't know if they're extra prideful or something, but they'll be you just be walking in the street at your miss. Who's your miss? Boys it's in this so country disgusting. make me sick. Like, oh they want to be chased like they're princesses. Girl, my so face. Sassy. They're so sassy. Like, mm. they'll be the ones to approach you, but then they'll make you look like a beg when you're talking to them. Like, Mm-mm. I don't know you from anywhere, by the way. From Adam. <laughs> like, no, sir. hey, so where will you date? Me? Oh, I've got somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's, she's happily in love. She's good. <laughs> she's just lying right now. <laughs> Someone, Let I go. have somebody, yeah. Yeah, where'd you get this bag from? Uh, oh, like, like, let it go. Yeah. You hold it like that. He put it for me. Self feces. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, I do, but yeah, I still have that. I still have that side of me that's like, you know, you're always worried. You don't want someone to take advantage of you. Yes. I.e., the use I use. Yes. The example I use is like my dad. So I have a side of me that's still very harsh. Very harsh. I'll just not end it. I'm not that person that ends relationships or stuff like that. But I'm just very like straightforward. I don't I don't play games, you know what I mean? Like even my partner's mum thinks like I don't know, she just thinks I'm like so strict. <laughs> but I'm not, but I kind of am at the same time. I just yeah. feel like you don't play games with men. Hmm. No. You don't do that. Yeah, you love him, hey? Yeah. Head over <laughs> heels. Head over heels in love. In love. Yeah. I do. Yeah. But I don't play. No. No. What do you love about him? Where should she start? Yeah. yeah, do you know do you know what I think? Yeah. I feel like if you can give a reason why you love somebody, that reason can change and you can no longer love them. Oh. Preach. I can't see you clapping. Hey, if you can give a reason, I need to write that down. That's so. I need to write that down. That's so powerful, you know. Oh God, God! (laughs) It's all you. It's all you. You know me. You know me. Yeah. If you can give a reason as to why you love someone, the reason can change. And then you can no longer love that person. Oh. <sighs> Did Harriet Tubman say that? What? <laughs> she said that. I made it up. No, you didn't. I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't make that up. Yeah. 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 That's powerful. Yeah. I know they are writing it down. Yeah. Right they better quote me. Yes. Quote <laughs> me. me. <laughs> the Miss Manyasi. The Miss Manyasi. All the way from where? London. Yes. yes. Oh, now you are London and not a Kenyan. No, I'm all the way from London. Oh. Originated in Kenya. Yes. That's it. You always have to say where I originated okay. from. Okay. Yeah. Dating, dating life for you? How is it? 
There is no life. <laughs> there is no life. There's no there's no date in life. Larry, <laughs> 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 are you gonna fall? Are you alright? You're gonna fall through the ground. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Mm. no. You're happily single. Yeah, the guys in this country are crazy. Like, I don't know. I don't know how it is in like in in Kenya or anything, but the the guys in this country are very aggressive. Like, not to say it's okay to put your hands on a man because I've never done it. I would never do it. <laughs> but it's like if in this country, if you if you like if you're in a heat argument or thing and you put your hands, he will beat you. Like he will actually beat you up. He will punch you back. And I'm someone that's like. I'm not ready to be beaten up by a man. I'm not. There's never a time to be ready. But yeah, there's never a time. And I know I'm not ready for that. So, um, I know sometimes I can be very hot-headed. So, I'd rather just... Be by yourself. Yeah. Hmm. No. Okay. Mm-mm. All right. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> Sinead. Oh, there's nothing quite there. Oh. Unless you count my books as my bae. Yeah. <laughs> you let it. Hey, do you I want... just, I have no interest. Like, I just see you, like, my friends, they're just silly, silly. I don't mm. want a silly, silly boy. Mm-mm. I don't want no scrub. The scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Hanging on the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Trying to holler at me. Hey. We're her. not we're not doing it. Mm-mm. What what how do you respond to people who say um this is like radical feminism, you're too hard headed, you won't go anywhere, you will die lonely. Eh? <laughs> That's insecure men talking. Yeah, yeah. Those are men who are so That's insecure. insecure because men. if you look back, people try to say look back, your grandma didn't get divorced, your da 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 but it's the grandmas that are telling us, get your money up, not your because you do not want to be with these people Mm-mm. that lock you. Because remember, they couldn't get bank accounts. They couldn't vote. So they barely Mm-mm. had any rights. If you didn't have a man, you basically have nothing, nothing yes. type thing. Yes. But that's not today's society. And I don't. I feel like a lot of men struggle to come to terms with that. Because they were able to deliver the bare minimum before and get away with it. Now women have standards. They have independence. They have freedom. They have rights. It is scratching their masculinity and they don't like it they don't want to be challenged by women yes they feel like women should know their place there's no place you know what i mean yeah. there's even the inequality in the workplace all of that stuff a woman will come a woman will come and do better than a man mm. he won't like that why you know i'll be seeing stories on tiktok a man is upset that his wife is making more than him he wants to leave make more money man. <laughs> What's the problem? Make more money. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You'd rather your insecurities consume you rather than... One, I don't see no problem your wife making more money than you. When you marry each other, you're a team. So there's no I, it's we type thing. So you're already seeing you and me. You're not a team. Hey. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So like that in itself, I don't think that's someone you should be with. That's toxic. That's negative. Like, if it's a we, if I make more money, you more money, it benefits both of us at the end mm. of the day. Mm. But I also believe that some women take it too far. How can you talk to me like that? I make more money than you. Da, da, da. You shouldn't do that to a man either. Mm. Because as the Bible says, the man is the head of the house. You have to respect him. The same way you respect him, he respects you. You shouldn't talk like that. Do you, know you have I mean? a different opinion? No, I think that's right because... As well as I'm someone that's like, I'm very focused, I'm very ambitious, I'm yes. very independent. When I decide to settle down, I know, and I know she's going to scream. I'm very happy being submissive. Like, the guy can lead and he can do what he wants and he can make more money. Like, <laughs> that's just me. Yeah. I feel like that's how it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. Like, he's meant to... He's meant to lead and I'm okay with him leading. Yes. That's fine, yeah. but I feel like she doesn't know anybody in this area. Do you know there's some no, people... No, not in this area. Yeah, okay, there's some the people when that I are meant to be down. with, like, big people. Mm, that's me. She's one of them. Yeah. Because she already makes more money than most boys that do legit things. If you want to do drugs and uh, fraud, then, of course, you can't compete with these yes. kind of people. Yeah. But if we're talking about legitimate jobs, stuff like that, she makes more money than most of them. 
so she's not in their, their bracket. That's why they come and they try to bring you down. Yes. That's why I don't feel like she has, she's met anybody that's like yeah. in that, which is where she can go and strive for higher, for more. Someone that's not in Woolwich. She's not going to find somebody there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, hey, which come is to fair. Kenya. No! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's like a crisis of masculinity going on because women are in higher paying jobs. There are women in STEM. Men are scared. What do I do now? What do I do now? A woman can make as much money as me. Okay. Okay. Like they're scared. They're saying, oh my gosh, now I have to do more feminine jobs. Just like if your wife's making more money at you, it's okay for you to stay at home and look after the kids, you know? Can no one's going to shame you because so society, it was obviously created by men, all these views created by men. Now men are saying women don't care about men's mental health. You don't care about your own mental health. Absolutely. Now you're projecting it onto us. We do care. But you're saying, it's a, you, your boy is saying, oh, you're crying. That's, that's, that's so feminine of you. If you cry, I'm not going to say that's so feminine of you. You're, you're, you're actually hurt. Like, it's okay to be hurt. It's okay to cry. Like, you don't always have to put on a tough front. But now they're like... It's like, they're so insecure. The society now is like, it's so embarrassing to do anything less than what's been stereotypically deemed as a masculine job. But it's fine. As long as you're making money and you can take care of the people you need to, your job is sufficient enough. You yeah. don't have to strive for what other people want because yes. what their capabilities are different to your capabilities. Now that you've set their goal for your future, you won't reach it and then you're embarrassed now. But if you set up... Yeah, if you set a realistic goal for yourself and you reach it, that's amazing for you. Good. Uh, talk talk to me about how young people are dealing with mental health issues here. I think young people, they love to label themselves as having depression, autism, ADHD, just anything. Like It's okay for you to not have a mental illness, you know? It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. <gasps> it's okay for you to be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay people say it's okay to be too sad. Just because no. you're sad doesn't mean you, you you have ADHD. Just because you're sad doesn't you mean you're sad. depressed. You yeah, yeah, can be yeah. sad. You have to be depressed. It's okay for you but to be like dumb as well. Everything yeah. is taken Girl. to the extreme right now, and especially with social media. It's like labeling how to deal with anxiety attacks. It's not an anxiety attack. You've just gone through something traumatic. Understandable. Just deal with it. You don't have to wow. have anxiety. You don't have to have depression. Yes. It's okay to just be going through a tough time. Yeah. You don't stop trying to label yourself because labels. They're more than just labels. It's deep. They're powerful. Yeah, yeah. and you're just really put. Oh, I'm depressed. I'm not depressed. I'm just sad today. And I'll be good tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Shine, you wanted to say I something? I feel like social media really demonizes some things as well. Like, if you're anxious about a certain thing, I feel like it's because you really care about. It. Like, oh, I'm anxious about getting a bad grade on my test. It's because I care. Like, I care about my future. But people demonize it. If you have anxiety, or you need to go get some medicine from here, then what? You become a vegetable on the couch like this. Huh? Oh my oh, god! Okay. <laughs> you people really need to be more ambitious and tackle how they're feeling head on rather than listening to people. Oh, this person said this. I think I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. They're not you. You don't have the same brain chemistry as them. Mm -hmm. Do what you believe is good for you. Yes, do what you believe is good for you. Too many influential things online. Yeah, people just trying to manipulate children into believing this, believing that, putting everyone in a box. Just go outside. Yeah, <laughs> Put your phone down and just go outside. Some things don't need to be taken to social media. It's yeah. just like maybe you speak to your mum by, I'm feeling sad about this. And she would give you the right advice. You yeah. don't have anxiety. You just, as she said, you care. You're very passionate about this thing. You don't want to mess up. You don't have anxiety. You're not depressed. Yeah. Just you're just passionate. Yeah, just speak to someone. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't need to take it to social yes. media. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's been an amazing conversation. I know you can't wait to get out of this couch. <laughs> no, Yay! it's been good. It's been good. Yes. It's been good. It's been good. It's been good. Been good. TikTok. You are such a star now. Yeah. <gasps> TikTok famous. Celeb. Yeah. Celeb. Come <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Such a star. You. you love it there. You love pranking mom. Yeah, and doing things to mom. Yeah, they make you happy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, just watch this one clip <laughs> from her TikTok, and you can just follow her for just funny content. I'm gonna sell a kidney then. Denise, oh my god, I'm gonna sell one of my kidneys. Oh my god, 
Mummy, I didn't know that you could sell a kidney and still what be. What is this, Denise? Is that now? Is that another job now you want? From the, the, the other ones that you are talking about. Yep. Now you want to be a kidney seller. Kidney. I can't be a kidney seller because yes, I only... Yes, you are. If you sell your kidney, that means you're a kidney seller. Stop that. Stop with that mindset. Stop thinking of that. I just told you a story. I didn't say that we should take it and relate it to you and take somebody's story and put it in. Now I want to do that. <laughs> Mom, that's... Don't call me mom. That was not your story. Okay. In fact, I take it back. There's no selling kidney. There's no selling something. It was a joke she was saying. It's not a joke. You can actually sell your kidney. No, you stop that. I just need to find someone to buy it. And who told you that operation is safe? Who told you you wake up from the operation? Who told you that person will even only take one kidney? They'll find your kidney so super nice. They'll take both. <laughs> they won't wake up. Then I'll die. Exactly. <laughs> so that money that you, were, you, you wanted, you've not even got it. Because hey, now you're gone. You said my kidney's super nice. Yes. Can I have can I have you in the operating room so then you know that? No, no, I am not going to know operating room because they're not doing such silly stuff. Yeah, I'm sure they watched that, but you just you, you are such a natural, and for me, I would tell you go out there. The world is your canvas. Just just go out there, explore with your art, have a YouTube channel, put these conversations on a podcast. Yeah. I'm serious. Serious. The way I was telling you the other day. Yeah. There's just so much in you. You can't just box yourself. Because it's it's okay for you to say some people want to box you. But the question you really should ask yourself is, am I boxing myself? Mm -hmm. Am I putting myself in a box? You get what I mean? So just go out there and just do crazy content. I saw your Zulu dance in that club, the Zulu. Yeah. And she was also there. She was yeah. like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> she then can dance. Yes, uh, the, Shaka, Shaka Zulu one, you know, and I saw her and I'm like, there's just so much in you guys that you just need to actually start asking, am I the one boxing myself? You get what I mean? Yeah. It didn't have to be me coming here and having this conversation. You could put this in a podcast and a lot of people will watch because yeah. you're such a natural, right? Mm -hmm. Larry, you are the business person here. So go out there and just put your work everywhere. I follow you on Instagram. It's not even as updated as it should be. You do really great things. And I feel like you really need to put yourself out there more. You know, I can't wait for you to have your own kitchen, mm. your own hotel. Have me say, oh God, she's my friend. Yes. I know Larissa on the first name basis. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I know, I know the I know her. So just go out there and just put your art out there, right? Mm -hmm. Sinead, for me to come across a young, open-minded person like you, it's an honor. And just go there and do what you need to do. Solve these problems for us, man. We don't have time to solve them for us. <laughs> we don't have time to figure out why this person does this. Why they just do it and just start talking about it. Create more awareness around it. Don't box yourself, okay? All right. But before I wind up and ask you to do something, is there anything you needed to touch on that you wanna touch on briefly? One last thing that I think is like really damaging mm -hmm. in our community. Yeah is telling children that adults can't be liars. I think that is a really, really, really damaging thing yeah. because if anything was happen to that child, they'll be thinking that this adult can't lie, can't do something wrong. So there's no need for me to try and speak out, especially if that person has manipulated that child into saying that, yeah. you know, what I've done is not wrong. Don't tell nobody X, Y, Z. You'll not tell anybody because this person has told you that I don't lie. I'm older than you. You need to believe me. And yes. your mum has also told you or your dad has also told you yeah. adults don't lie. Yeah. So you've just kept that to yourself. Yes. And so maybe something can keep happening. It's only when you're older that you mm -hmm. realise, but that's also mm -hmm. too late. Yeah. So stop telling children that adults don't lie. Everybody lie. lies. Yes. They even lie the most. Yes. You know? They lie the most. So yeah, just I think that's something that's really damaging mm. in our community in our community you know uh, anyone else now for the people that live away from home yes that to know yourself to know your culture to know that your identity is not found in this country but back home to be educated mm. about the things going on 
in your country yeah. because it's important it's for me to say thank you for just coming on the show it's been amazing yeah all right and you just go out there and do what you're supposed to do and just be open-minded about life continue living your truth be the best version of yourself right so Denny, since I know your Swahili is so, so good, could you wind this show up for yeah. us in Swahili and tell people where they can find you? Let's Indeed. do this. Ndiyo yapo. What did you say? <laughs> you heard what I said. Say it. Go. Go. Kwa Harry. Just that? Yeah. Wakupata wapi TikTok? Uh, kwa TikTok. Jina mm. yangu ni Queenzilla. Yes. Uh, enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. I'm gonna put all your social here on the screen so that people can get hold of you and they can follow you. But that's about it, guys. I have to wind up. We have another shoot coming in. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'm interested in your take home from today's conversation. Put it there on the comment section and do not forget follow her Instagram page. She has her work out there. Follow her on TikTok and challenge her to have her own youtube channel maybe probably Sinead will write a book for us i'll tell you about it later but before that allow me to say thank you so much to our partners at tap tap sent for coming through this episode remember guys you can always send money back home to your mpesa or bank account using tap tap and by using my code lean you are able to get 10 percent cash back on the amount on your screen right now thank you so much for joining me i have to go lydia tetolet you've done a great job raising your girls huh? and i hope we are able to learn a thing or two from today's conversation see you tomorrow at 10 a.m